Hi, my name is Steven Lowenson. I'm a photographer and a cinematographer in the Bay Area. I currently work for an advertising agency in San Francisco called Recreation, and I do a lot of work with drones. Um, I've been flying drones for a couple years now, and currently my favorite drone to fly right now is the DJI Mavic 2 Pro. Uh, I like it because it's small enough to pack, you can throw it in a backpack and take it on a hike, and it gets really great image quality. You can get really stunning photos and videos, time-lapse, hyperlapse. it really does everything I need it to. But the Mavic 2 Pro might not be for everyone. There are smaller drones out there and the Mavic 2 is pretty expensive. If you're looking for something smaller and more affordable, there's options like the DJI Mavic Air and the DJI Spark. In addition to the drone itself, there's a couple of items that I always take with me on every drone shoot. One of them is the Peak Design Everyday Messenger Bag. I like it because it's got a perfect size compartment for your Mavic 2 Pro, your controller, and a DSLR or mirrorless camera. One thing I always recommend to people who are buying a new drone is get as many extra batteries as you can. More batteries keeps you from crashing. When you're, when you're in the air and you're trying to get that last shot, it's better to just land and fly a fresh battery than to try to you know, run out the battery and end up crashing. Another accessory you might want to get is a neutral density filter. On a sunny day like today, if you want to shoot video, you might end up having to use a very high shutter speed, which can make your video look a little bit jello-y. A neutral density filter allows you to use a slower shutter speed and get smooth, buttery video footage. I like to keep my DJI Mavic controller fully assembled when it's in my bag instead of removing the detachable thumbsticks because I like to be ready to fly quickly. So one accessory that I really like is the thumbstick protector, which allows you to just throw the controller into your bag fully assembled and be ready to fly in seconds. The Mavic 2 comes with 8 gigabytes of onboard storage, but that fills up really fast when you're shooting raw photos and 4K video. So you'll want to invest in a high quality micro SD card, probably 64 to 128 gigabytes, so you have plenty of room to store all your stuff. But you want to be careful which SD card you buy. A slower, older card may not be able to keep up with the data rate of the Mavic 2's video recording, and you can end up with corrupted data files. This has actually happened to me. I grabbed an old card off the shelf and threw it in the Mavic 2, and I ended up with corrupted video files. All right, now that you've got all your gear and you've found a good spot to fly, let's talk about some ways to get better footage. My number one recommendation for anyone who's starting out in flying drones is to start by flying high. A lot of people think mistakenly that it's more safe to fly low and stay near the ground, but there's a lot less stuff to crash into up there, and you get better shots. My second safety tip is to never take off until your drone has GPS lock. You want to wait until you see the green GPS mode logo at the top of the DJI app before you take off. What you don't want is to take off without GPS and for your drone to suddenly find GPS lock while it's in the air and decide it needs to be 20 feet over to the right and crash into a tree. And you're going to want to set your drone for manual exposure. It gives you much more control over the brightness of your image and you don't want to leave it on auto because you could end up with a shot where the drone changes exposure in the middle. I recommend enabling the histogram in your camera settings and keeping it on your screen at all times. This lets you know whether your image is overexposed or underexposed so you can get proper exposure every time. You can enable highlight warnings, also known as zebra stripes, which will show you any areas of your image that are overexposed. One technique I use all the time is shooting video in tripod mode. This allows you to move the drone through the air very slowly and get incredibly smooth hyperlapse videos, much smoother than what you get when you use the built-in hyperlapse mode in the DJI app. 